I hear little feet scurrying about in my manor. What little mouse has decided to take refuge here so far from civilization? There's no use in hiding, little mouse. I have lived here far longer than you have been alive. I can tell when even the slightest thing is off. And I can hear you, smell you, that scent of blood. <laughs> Oh, how it rushes through your veins as fear forces your little body into a frenzy. Your heart pumping away. Pump, pump, pump. It's completely unaware that its attempt to help you is only drawing me closer to you. Those little breaths of yours. I bet you're clutching your mouth trying to stifle your panicked breaths. Your lungs trying to force as much oxygen into them that they don't care if they drag in what they previously let out. It might be in your best interest to come out if that's the case, little mouse. Are you going to hyperventilate? That won't stop me from finding you. How will you react? I'm not so undignified that I would feast without your presence. I like to look my prey in their eyes. Does that scare you? What makes you more afraid? The thought of me finding you? Or the thought of you waking up to me staring directly at you? My crimson eyes glowing in the darkness as I approach. One little bite is all it would take. Or maybe I'll keep you. It's been so long since I feasted on a human. It would be such a waste to simply drain you. I've heard that it even feels good. It makes sense, doesn't it? In order to keep our prey docile, it would be better to cause pleasure than pain. A question remains. Should I keep you as cattle or as a pet? If I make you my thrall, you'll find pleasure in doing as I say. You would be attached to me because you would have just enough of my blood to keep you from aging. But if I keep you as cattle, well, what use for a mind do you have? Just a mindless animal, existing only to be drained by me. But you would enjoy that too. It's so much more enjoyable to destroy a mind by overflowing it with pleasure. But at the same time, you would only live your current lifespan and any affection you would have would simply be a normal response. Kind of like a dog. You love them, and you know that they love you, but that's it. They will die long before you, and you may shed a few tears, but at the end of the day, you'll have them replaced in a few months. So I guess the question left is, what do you want? Either way, I will have a source of food. But in only one scenario will I have something that truly adds to my manner. 
Will you be my food or my pet? What is your choice, little mouse? And don't think you can escape. I know that you can see me. I bet that you think I don't know you're there, but you're trapped. All I would have to do is simply walk over there and pull you out. And if I do that, I'll lose the option that I know frightens you more. Can you comprehend feeling as your memories, your identity, as you simply slip away? Not knowing who you are, just that you want this woman to keep taking care of you. And then, dying of old age, discarded and forgotten by time. I'm not cruel. You would be fed and comfortable and cared for, but you wouldn't be you, would you? I'll give you until the count of three. One. Two. There you are, little mouse. It looks like it took you so much effort to reveal yourself. Such a little thing you are. Why, it looks like I could crush you with just one finger. Don't fret over such details. The most adorable things in this world are almost always more fragile than the beholder. Look at you, petrified with fear. That won't do. Look up at me, little mouse. Look into my eyes. So timid. Cute. But by now you've realized that you can't look away. You shouldn't want to look away. My crimson eyes should be the only thing in the world that you want to look at right now. Now then, what to do with you? Well, I can't have you living here in constant fear. Why don't you listen to my voice? There you go. Allow my voice to wash over you. Your body trembled, but your mind remains in my grasp. You feel that you can trust me you can't help but be afraid. That's only natural. You're so small and delicate that even a gust of wind could knock you down, and darling, I am the whole goddamn storm. But seeing you in that current state tells me that you like this. It took zero effort on my part to put you into this state. I bet I could get you to do whatever I want. Why don't you take a step forward? Maintain eye contact, though. Good. You like it when I give you orders. Whenever you follow them, you feel good. Is that right? Good little mouse. Now then, the next thing I want you to do is very important. I want you to open your mouth. Lick the cut on my hand. Take some blood for yourself. <laughs> 
Good. Now I want you to listen closely. I will instruct you to break your case, and my ability to issue new commands will break until I command you to look into my eyes again. And when you break your gaze, I want you to enter a state of fatigue. You will look at me with trust and allow me to help you into my chamber. You will not resist. However, I want you to keep your timid nature. In fact, I want nothing about you to change besides what I've very clearly instructed of you. All you will remember is that I did this to you. You will not know what I changed. Now, wake up. Break the gaze. Now then, little mouse. You must be tired after such a journey. You can barely stand. Why don't you let me help you? That's it, little mouse. Are you frightened? You can't stop yourself from obeying me. You feel good, but at the same time, you're so shy. So scared. You can't even look me in the eyes. Is it because of my hypnosis? Or are you just so shy that you would simply perish if you looked at them? Why I'm taking you to my chambers, is there a problem? You seem to be confused. <laughs> it's almost like someone messed with your head. You should stay with me then. We don't know what else has changed. Or at least, you don't. I didn't do much. I just made you a little more agreeable. I didn't want to spend a long time convincing you to follow me. It's so late, wouldn't you agree? It's almost morning. Still, why would you come here? Have you not heard the story? You know, the ones that talk about the manor being owned by a blood-sucking vampire. That she lives alone for her village was devoured and left to rot, overtaken by the forest. Surely a little rain was not enough to drive you here. Because... The second you stepped foot into my manor, there was no chance I would have let you get away. But you knew that already, didn't you, little mouse? That's why you came out. You knew that there was no chance to get away. I find it so adorable when prey is smart enough to know when they're done. After all... Hunting is how I've survived this long. But animal blood is sour. It doesn't carry the same weight as knowing you're drinking from a human. The animals here have survived for so long, but none are smart enough to build giant structures. Yet they're also not foolish enough to live in favor of another. Oh, how fun it was when I was considered a disgrace to their god for simply living. I've never killed anyone that didn't want me dead. But, I never stopped when self-defense turned into an attack of my own. They should have known better. 
They should have been smart enough to know that the second they entered my manor with the intent to kill me, they wouldn't leave with their lives. Does that make you less frightened or more? You know that I've killed, but only when I've had to. You have nothing to fear unless you intend to hurt me. But I suppose the knowledge that I can in fact end your life easily carries fear by itself. Or maybe it brings a sense of security. After all, when you're at my side, the amount of people who can harm you is virtually zero. There are other monsters, but very few are as old and powerful as I am. I compare your kind to animals because at the end of the day, you are. The difference is that I've not only accepted it, but I've also embraced it. I became a predator, and all of the wolves realized that they were actually just sheep. But in the modern day, you have become less like sheep and more like rodents, scurrying about the earth and gnawing on whatever you can sink your teeth into. But you, you are just one little mouse. Do you realize how little you actually are? You look surprised. Did you expect a coffin? Where is it written that a vampire must sleep in their coffin? <laughs> Just another reason why your kind are comparable to sheep. Something worked once and now you regard it as fact not even bothering to question if it was something that just happened to be correct once and never again. A stake through the heart would kill just about anything, wouldn't you agree? Now then, I think I've waited long enough. <laughs> Have you forgotten the reason why you're still alive? Why I only kill if I have to. And there's that fear that looks oh so adorable on you. Why don't you sit down on the bed? You're practically clinging to me to keep from falling. There, there. Such a good little mouse. Such smooth skin. Very few marks. Your neck is practically spotless. Don't be scared, it's just one little pinch. I promise you'll enjoy this. <laughs> Don't struggle. That's it. Just go limp. I've got you. You are so delicious. Human blood is so much more divine than I remember. It's addicting. I know I have to stop soon. Just a little more. That was divine. I haven't felt this full in centuries. And look at you, 
so tired and worn, barely conscious. It makes the predator in me hungry. But whatever could I still be hungry for? <laughs> Just lie back, little mouse. I could hear your thoughts, just as you heard my own. And I know what you want to be used for.